welcome to Show Studio. Um, we're talking about the Thomas Tate Show today, which is an obvious choice. We have to talk about Thomas because it's been the most exciting time for him because he's just won the LVMH Young Fashion Designer Prize. Um, I've got an amazing set of panellists with me and Thomas Tate fans to help talk about his brand, where he's going, that win, and also the show that we're going to see today, Spring Summer 15. Um, but before we kick things off, I'll let you guys <coughs> introduce yourselves, starting with you, Hetty. Hello, I'm Hetty Judah, and I'm a writer and editor specialising in fashion, art and design. Um, I'm Belle Jacobs, I'm a freelance writer and blogger. My name's Kobe Yates, <laughs> um, I'm a stylist working in London. Sorry, I had lipstick on my teeth when I was introducing the teacher, <laughs> like, you have lipstick on your teeth. It's a really classy way to start the panel. Glamorous. Anyway, let's start by talking about the, um, the prize win, because obviously like, hundreds of young designers entered it, and then it got down to 11 finalists, one of which was another young British designer who we all love, Simone Rocher, who I particularly love. Um, amazing set of judges as well, Nicholas Gasquier, Phoebe Philo, the Kenzo duo, Ricardo Tishi, Raph Simmons. Um, so to win that prize really is kind of like the ultimate Competent. in fashion. It's completely ridiculous. And the prize itself is incredible as well. It's um, 300,000 euros in, in sort of financing towards the label and then also like this year-long mentoring. Were we all happy that Thomas won? Did we think it was the right choice? So happy. Such stiff competition. So happy. Um, it's just so interesting that they, p people constantly want to keep uh, pushing fashion forward. You know, because it would be an easy choice to 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 give it to Simone, because obviously she's wonderful. Yeah. Um, but it just helps grow the platform. You know, like yeah. why why not give it to him? Um, his designs are in the initial stages, so he is a, a little bit more behind Simone. Yeah. But in terms of what he's offered so far, it's been incredible. Um, actually, I think he's been going quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually. Yeah, yeah. no, he has. Had it. Look, I think one thing that's important to note with this is that it's not a one-shot thing at all. Yeah, they yeah, really yeah. emphasize that everybody can keep re-entering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he's been going for at least four years. Oh, really? Years. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree with what you're saying, though. There is this idea that Simone has really cultivated what she's about and set up her brand, whereas he does feel, in a sense, a little bit fresher just in terms of establishing and maybe in terms of awareness yeah, yeah, yeah. and also stockers you know, we were talking about it before with people perhaps not giving him as much press as Simone would get you know mm. you, you definitely don't see his covers shot his fashion shot on the covers of magazines and the way that you do with Simone if anything that's even more interesting the fact mm. that like you know it isn't his first and then yeah you know you can take some time have a breather mm. reevaluate, come back and mm. then you know Mm. Win it, which is so. This which is, is the first well. ever LMV. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's and they're kind of setting the tone for what they want to look for in the future. But it is interesting that they've picked someone who's who's so much less established than someone like Simone. Yeah, yeah. It's about big, big industry finding cutting edge labels. Mm. Um, I mean, I think, I think it's funny because he went. I think his work went through a bit of a kind of turning point because I yeah, think I in the early years he was actually getting a lot of notice for what he was doing, which was, I mean, it doesn't have the kind of gothic aspect of Anton Minamisa, but he was certainly using a similar kind of architecture. So you'd have mm. kind of broad, wide front coming mm, down yeah, here yeah. and then it yeah, opening yeah. out from here and a lot of volume coming out over mm. the hips yeah. and then pooling on the ground. Yeah. And he was really interested in these um, silhouettes that kind of opened up, that kind yeah, of peeled exactly. open yeah. like petals. Onion -like, yeah. And so there were a few of these years where he did a lot of these silhouettes that were quite monochrome yeah mm -hmm. and then I think he suddenly started going wild for color a couple of years well, yeah, ago exactly. and it was and there was a really there was a collection a few back that was really super sporty I mean yeah. was, I was looking at that and thinking about actually the last Mark by Mark show that yeah, yeah that's exactly last, what I was yeah. thinking when yeah. you were getting all of those and he even had the logo in which yeah. was so brave like, um, at, yeah. that, at that at that stage of his career yeah. it was so brave no, but absolutely. um so, yeah. you know, so he was actually really pushing himself. Which is interesting because I think you're totally right. If people, if you said Thomas Tate now, people would say they say sporty and they say colour, when actually you're completely right. That's, he has spent time kind of working out what he's about and moving forward a bit. And it's interesting as well that you mentioned those logos because I do feel like he's really, has kind of preceded a lot of the things that we really take for granted now. And he, and just even just like his way with colour is absolutely brilliant. Mm. And it, it, feel, it felt very new when he kind of started exploring colour. We were talking about that before, we were saying how much of a colourist he is. Do we think that's one of his biggest skills? What, what is it that you love about Thomas Tate? I mean, he's just, he, his, his cutting ability is just extraordinary. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I mean, I guess we're going to talk a bit about the images that we've got on the screen a mm. bit. But one of the things that um, drew him to this artist was the idea of creating 
a unified image <coughs> across multiple yeah, planes. Tell us about the images yeah. that we've got here, because this is a sneak um, peek thanks to you, and it's the, it's the show space that he's going to, and the, the set, if you can call yeah. it that, that he's going to be working with. So I think, I mean, about a year ago, he started getting interested in a French artist called Georges Rousse, um, who came to prominence in the 80s, um, who works with derelict buildings or buildings that are going to be extensively renovated. And he goes in and he manipulates the space and he does um, a single point perspective painting or installation. So he'll maybe be using structures from that existing building. But it's all designed to be seen through the lens of a camera. And then he'll take the photograph and the work will then be destroyed. Okay. And it, the work only exists as the photograph and it's then printed up as quite a large format mm. photograph. And um, <coughs> Thomas got very interested in him about a year ago and I think ends up approaching him through his gallery. And I think it's really interesting that in that collection that he did that won the LVMH award, you can really see him starting to do that, particularly across the coats and the jackets, yeah. where he's got one great big graphic element that's actually using many, many, many different pieces of fabric exactly, yeah. to create something that also seems just to kind of pop out on a single picture plane, yeah. but, is, it, but actually exists at many points of depth, oh, at many yeah. angles. So with this kind of thing, you've got all kinds of different angles of the pillars, and it, it looks completely fake. And I think one of the things that really also drew Thomas to him, and, and one of the reasons that he wanted me to go and see it last weekend to write about it for Art Review, is that for his generation that's really grown up with Photoshop and a lot of image manipulation, these just look fake. That yeah. looks like yeah. it's mm. just something that somebody's done in yeah, production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you walk into the set and you stand on the cross and it looks like that and it just pops straight that's out of you like mm. that. Mm. But it, there are the number of complicated angles that are going on there. I mean, I think he's even put fake pillars in so he's creating extra layers of depth mm. in there. And the bits of the alcove in the wall you can't see aren't painted. And even if you look closely, there's kind of paper peeling off yeah. underneath, and it's just really thick matte paint that's creating that effect. But actually, the surface of the image is quite destroyed. So mm. he didn't create any special new covering on the walls. Um, so, I mean, as, you know, going back to the original question, which is mm. what is it that's kind of so amazing? He's an, he's an amazing structuralist, he's an amazing. Taylor, he, you know, he can really create a very, very complex pattern, mm. but at the same time make it do something beautiful on the body. Mm. Which I think when I started off talking about um, the alliance maybe with some of Anton Melamisa's silhouette, you know, it's that first thing of actually really looking at a female body and having quite a beautiful kind of um, enfolding curved silhouette going around it as well. Mm. So it's, he's building up multiple elements. Mm. I think it's interesting what you said there about particularly to a generation that you know, is used to image ma manipulation and used to seeing things online and seeing things in a very flat way. I think that Thomas, for me, what I find really intriguing about him is the, the divide that he does between stuff that feels very modern, almost very futuristic, and that's another word that gets tied to him a lot, but then stuff that is incredibly sort of, I guess, old school in the way that it focuses on craft and construction and cut, and I think he balances that perhaps in a better way than most other, you know, lots of designers that work in a futuristic way, you don't feel like they've also got that amazing sort of knowledge and craft pedigree that he has, which I find really exciting. What is it that you love about him, Belle? Um, I think definitely his technical ability is amazing. I like his approach to his collections. He tends to think about them in a very 360 way, mm -hmm. in that he considers the presentation and the reception of, of them, as well as everything else. Uh, I believe that's true. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I love what he produces. Um, there's a lot of confidence, I think, for someone so young to produce some of the very minimal silhouettes that yeah. he did. I've never actually, unfortunately, had first-hand contact with contact the product, with nor have I. Well, yeah, and we were having this conversation really, as well, and really I think yeah. this I season is going to be really down. interesting, yeah. really, for him, I think, just because I think the access that people are going to be able to have to the collection is going to be a lot bigger. higher, um, which means that you know the coverage as well is going to be a lot higher. Um, I think people are really going to get a chance to experience what you were talking about a little bit earlier, Hetty, which was mm -hmm. basically that whole seeing the picture of the of the piece and then actually having the product physically in front yeah. of you and seeing the actual dimensions are completely different to yeah. what you're experiencing visually, which is like magnificent in mm -hmm. itself. But um, I think what I like about him, I don't know if you had finished, um, but, but what no, I was going to say is what I like um, about him is just the fact that he looks at his collection outside of the actual collection itself yeah. it's more about the body of work and I love that he's considering that and like kind of now we're kind of talking about him 
for six, seven seasons in, mm-hmm. but yet you can see pieces of his body of work that kind of explain who he is as a, as a designer well, he from has issue two exactly, or from yeah. season two, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the fact that he was playing around with that logoism and, you know, he's, he's had an opportunity to explore so many different facets of who, what makes him a designer already. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like, yeah, he's kind of just t- scratching the surface. It's mm-hmm. so interesting, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah. No, when you're talking about classics, I mean, I guess two of the things that really came up in the last season is one, you know, he's got this incredible strength for doing outerwear. Yeah, yeah. amazing he's, he's an jacket. amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. coats does. and jackets. And then also, you know, I was talking about things that peel open. That, in the last collection, really got, um, uh, com- you know, complexified into these amazing skirts which had these micro pleats down them and then also kind of petals on them mm. right. which all had these different colours on them. He also did a black one as well mm. and they were so complex mm. and I remember in the film they did they did little um, short videos for all the finalists to the LBMH award and that was the piece that he was showing and trying mm. to explain about what happened to it when it was in motion and how he wanted to look at something that's kind of flowing and changing mm. and you've got these you know, these lines that weren't dict- you know, dictatorial straight lines, these colours that were evolving as well with the motion of the human body. Mm. It's interesting um, that we were talking as well about having first-hand contact with his clothes because I think it's worth noting, we were talking about this before we went live, you know, that at the point where he won the prize, and I, I presume it's going to increase rapidly, he only actually had 10 stockers. And I think that's an interesting thing with him. And I, I wonder, I'd love to get you got your guys' opinion about why you think that perhaps he hasn't had the same success in terms of the buyers getting the work and picking it up as he has kind of the success of us all thinking it's brilliant mm. and we were talking a bit about price point before and also yeah. I think he's a real pioneer of kind of I guess subverting what an idea of a luxury fabric is I think he does that very well you know we've talked about how he was using very sporty fabrics what is it that maybe means that he hasn't progressed to that amount of stockists Do you know I think it might come down to something as simple as not having the production ability mm. or you know like not being able to kind of have that structure that some people mm. do have. Yeah. You know, some people mm. have the luxury of being able to kind of have seven or eight people on their team from the get-go mm. yeah. that can kind of help them coordinate everything. That that's that the back end part of the business is so important. And you know, if you don't have that, then how how do you expect to, you know, mm. uh, yeah. to, to, to grow your business? Because without and that, ten stockers is not something to be sort of like sniffed at, you know, it's really Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It is. That it's fun, it's wonderful. But I just think that it's um yeah, you know, I think that he, I mean, without kind of putting words in his mouth or without mm. having to speak for him, I, I just don't know what that structure was like. It would be interesting yeah. to know if, if it was tough for him, you know, and I think mm. that um, now he's being afforded that opportunity of being to able to the... choose his team, select, I can't wait to see what yeah. he does with mm. that, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm interested, I would love to know what the conversations be- between buyers is, really, because I yeah. wonder if they find the aesthetic difficult in any way. Um, I mean, I honestly I think it's fairly easy to understand. So, so, do, so do I. Yeah. yeah. But could that be a factor at all, if they think it's not going to sell at those price points? Mm. I wonder if the price point yeah, has yeah, yeah, to do there you with go. it, is that, mm-hmm. you know, we often talk about a smarter consumer, how they want more for their money, and I mm. think, and in some ways, we, we mean that in a really good way, but I also think it's meant that, kind of, things like embellishment and things that are very obviously very expensive do very well, whereas things that are a little bit more kind of, the fabric might not be immediately something you associate with luxury and something that is a bit cleaner, mm. perhaps does, it doesn't pop online, mm. which is incredibly frustrating. Mm. But I do also feel that there's a current of quiet luxury. I think there's yeah, you know, people with a lot of money who are willing to spend on things that don't shout yes. their interest. And he would appeal very much to that market, obviously. Yeah. But for some reason, the buyers aren't putting those two together. I mean, I think he has played with image quite a lot as well. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, we were talking about Simone earlier. You kind of know who Simone's girl is. Mm. You know what you're going... I mean, even if you're mm. obviously using very kind of radical fabrics and um, some quite out there shapes, you kind of know the kind of image you're getting with Simone. So I'm mm. going to cough. Um, <laughs> I need to get away from my microphone. <laughs> <coughs> um, I think he's played around with so many, you know, he's experimented with so many references in the last mm-hmm. few years that maybe you don't necessarily know who the Thomas Tate woman, woman is, unless you really know that you are her. Yeah. You know, who would you say his peers are? I mean, obviously his peers not in terms of the kind of fellow young London designers, but his peers in terms of aesthetic. Do you know who I really like that I don't know if is, is I think this season's kind of going to be giving him the same sort of platform as well but um, there's another Canadian designer actually called Josh Ream I don't Mm. know if you know him but his stuff is like 
really cool. Really? And it, it kind of sits in that in that in that vibe of it, it's just in its own lane. It's it plays around with the sort of primary block colours and um, it's incredibly internal in, in mm. terms of like there's no sort of outside influence but um, I think he just showed I remember speaking with one of like because he has a very very small team as well mm. I was trying to get some stuff in and um, mm. the shipping was ridiculous yeah um, so I didn't end up um, doing it oh god I just realized I just said his name on here oh no I wanted yeah, to like everyone wants <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh, <laughs> what am I doing <laughs> but anyway um, <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I tried to call into bits and it was like ridiculous to call in. Um, so yeah. I was just like, do you know what, I'll wait. But he's showing, uh, he was showing at New York Fashion Week and I think he's kind of, I haven't had a chance to see um, his collection, but like, I think someone like him would be uh, one of his peers. It'd be interesting yeah. to see what people are doing globally. Obviously, I don't know if many people know that he is actually Canadian and, mm. you know, I thought he was British until I kind of actually heard him speak. Yeah. Um, but yeah it might be more of an international basis like maybe another another um, designer from Antwerp and then mm -hmm. another designer from somewhere else it's not I don't think it's placed to specifically here no I, um, I agree I think? think just yeah. he did his MA at St Martin's obviously as we were saying so yeah kind of geographically is why he's here but it, you wouldn't it wouldn't feel it's out more worldly than that else, yeah. yeah but it's true yeah I can't I mean the, the thing I would say about the Thomas Tate woman was that she's intelligent yeah yeah um but i know what you mean in terms of visuals he, d he has gone from sporty to incredibly mm. minimal to um i mean his graduation show was the yeah, main thing was very sort of blocky yeah. angular shape so that was um so i see i see I, I know what you mean that there isn't a particular character that's going to go you know that's just something that him. really follows fashion very yeah. very closely and is just interested in supporting him and but I have yeah. to think that with exactly. buying into his vision. Yeah. I think that a lot with J.W. Anderson. I think I see similarities with them in that way where they've mm. had kind of oh. they have had different aesthetics in terms of like if you even if you think about the Jonathan Anderson Paisley, which kind yeah. of put him on the map, it's so different to kind of what we see him doing now, where it's much more yes. about kind of silhouette and architecture. And I see a similarity just in yes. terms of the two of them where you think, you know, I, I also can't pinpoint a J.W. Anderson woman. I can imagine well, women I think that it's would easier love now, his pieces. Though, yeah. Yeah. It probably would be easier now. And, and with J.W. Anderson, it seems, even though the starting point and the current point, it seems quite far apart now, when you think of all the Paisley and yeah. sort of Even when you think of the first, like, sort of the, the, the heart with the, um, the, with the layering, yeah. Like, yeah. which was one of the first things that But it seems to be a more bit, linear yeah. progression. With yeah. Thomas, he is literally going from that to that to mm. that. Didn't, didn't he use the word backlash once with you? Or there was a word... Whiplash. Yeah. Yeah. Whiplash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he has a kind of reaction to something. I've, I've done too much of this, I want to try this now. Yeah. No, yeah. that's exactly what he said. He talks I, about that kind yeah. of reaction where he... But I love I designers that work like that. I love that. It's great. Which really, my Reese Reese is Thomas Tate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's brilliant in that. It's though. really good. It's though. a lovely series where we get yeah, designers to talk to their yeah. collections. But he does speak about that, this idea of... And, but I love designers that work in that way where they... Because I think this is Christopher Kane's biggest strength, where they take a theme and it's like they just eat it up and they rip it apart and they yeah. do everything you could do with it. And yeah. then they're totally bored with it and they want to do something else. And I kind of love that. That's mm. Yes. Because I think there's a thirst to that in a yes. way. But then going back to being a young designer, I think that is difficult then to kind of have this clear aesthetic. Yes. I mean, personally, one of the things I really liked about Thomas Tate is that he is very realistic. I mean, he does say, not everyone's going to like what I do, but it doesn't mean he's going to change what he's going to, you know, yeah. he, you know he's, he's intellectually very curious. He has a lot of integrity. Yeah. Um, but he also, curiously, he seems quite realistic about sort of that link between the shop floor and the studio, isn't yeah. he? I mean, he's quite practical about that. Mm. Should yeah. we have a look at what he's yeah, done definitely. for the so I'm so glad we got to see the pictures of the set because going back to the issue of catwalk images not doing things justice. Yeah, and also yeah. We, we, if we're getting the just from one place we'll only see one part of yeah. it, we won't see all three because they're in three different rooms. Can you spot the cash injection? <laughs> Like it's quite nice playing that game where it makes you feel good. Oh, uh, yeah. The what Maybe? injection? The cash, the cash injection. injection. You know, every time you're trying to get a lot of money, you look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, money. That yeah, 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 yeah. so much better. Yeah. Well, of course, he he did all of this, I think... Pretty much before, yeah. yeah. And the plan for this show was part of his application for the awards. Oh, so right. it oh, was, right, okay. it's... You know, I imagine he. I think he's somebody that's like a kind of slow burn person in general. I don't think he's just suddenly going to shove everything in mink. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. You think those glasses are his? 
Yeah, I think he it's does a lot that's of his... That's so smart. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. wicked. He does a lot of his own accessories, doesn't mm. he? Do Which is brilliant yeah. because you think that's exactly the kind of thing people want to buy. I mean, and that's an area yeah. that he could just completely make his own. Like, yeah. I don't think anyone is kind of focusing on it like in that world. No. Like, imagine if he just had that, you know, the, mm. toss, the Thomas Tate, the next Tom Ford sort of yeah, really silhouette with, 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 with the frame. That mm. would be incredible. I always feel like young... I talked about this before in Palace. I always feel like young London designers really miss out on the accessories category. Yeah. If you look at Alex Wang with the bags and even Jason Witt, like you just don't... I know... You want to see more. Yeah, I feel like we're not... Yeah. We don't British, oh my London. God. I, yeah. Simone Rush's shoes. Yeah, Simone Rush's shoes. Yeah, Simone's yeah. Simone yeah. Simone yeah. Simone's yeah. Simone's yeah. the first one that's championing like, it. <gasps> Oh my god, Samira's just an amazing shit. It's such yeah. a surprise to a young designer doing a great accessory. I, I mean, I was happy to see that like Christopher's now started kind of exploring it a little bit yeah. more because I think he could bring something to the table and, and also Lueve as well. Mm. But um, yeah, I agree, man. I think it's that there really needs to be like those coveted pieces of mm. accessories mm. in mm. London or in Britain mm. or in you know Europe. Um, mm. These yeah. are really interesting, aren't they? Given the set that we were talking about, Hattie, what's your reaction to the collection so far? Um, it's really, I mean, it's really interesting. I'm not actually, I don't feel like I'm s seeing the kind of classic pieces. We yeah, yeah, this yeah, isn't. Mm. Yeah. But I think something, to, even just in the oh, wow, those that pleats skirt are is amazing. amazing. Yeah. yeah. He's very, his, his little tiny 12, thin like pleats are just extraordinary. Oh, that jacket is amazing. The rounded shoulders and that kind of shape. Mm. 12 is like great. 12 is like so commercially viable as yeah, well. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm. Um, that's his overcoat. But I feel like that's an extended version of a coat we've seen countless times from yeah. him and it's done in a slightly different yeah. way. and. Yeah, as I say, that kind of wide collarbone. Yeah, exactly. That's that is sick. Yeah, and fifteen it. as well. That's a classic from him, but he's just kind of chopped it up. It's almost like a jacket that we've seen numerous times from him. I but think he's the cutting it on that is really super incredible. Yeah, it's really, really if you look how it's petaling around the side, it's um. This is the thing. Yeah, you'd ask talking about why it's so expensive. If you look at the amount mm. of work it's going to, and the I number don't think of it's pieces. overpriced by any means. Oh, it's just seventeen that, is yeah. beautiful. Really, really pretty. Really, really, really I'd love nice. to get a close up when we can of what the fabric is. It looks like because you were talking about like yeah that amazing quite um, the iridescent the iridescent love fabrics. That. Last I thought they looked like it was on the on the skirt, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. number nineteen. But, you've got but also the background of that of seventeen and eighteen almost looks like a kind of sibling fabric. Uh, yeah, very yeah. very yeah, sheer, yeah. slightly mm. tr um, iridescent mm, fabric. Right. I think number nineteen is just beautiful. Like, yeah, it's nice. I, I, that shape is kind of similar to seventeen as well, and. Yeah, that's, it's really fresh. The colour palette is really nice. Mm. Has he done much oh, asymmetry? 21 is no, cool. No, I don't associate him with asymmetry at no, all, really. Okay. He, I think it definitely has done it, but not to the extent with yeah, which it's it is being explored yeah. in this collection. I love the candy light sort of palette. Mm. Sweet he's, shot palette. Yeah, he's very um, good at off colours. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Colours that, that look slightly gorgeous. wrong together. Yeah. To me it feels, and I, I do not mean this like he's referencing it at all, but it feels in that same kind of vein as Raph Simmons at Dior, that kind of very modern... Oh yeah, the candy Yeah, sort of just colours. a great mm. palette, really modern, but it, there's something about this that it does just feel a little bit cool. You know, Dior is it's, it's done in a much more sort of like luxury So 25 well. I'd say is more of a kind of classic look yeah. from him, is that yeah. kind of... Um, you know, again, the exposed collarbones and then that is peeling that a, of Is that a sock or is that a boot? Or what? Oh. I think it looks like tights. Yeah, probably tights over yeah. the shoe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. final tights. It is. Yeah. It's quite I do alarming. not want jazzy tights coming back. My <laughs> jazzy. Me. Jazzy tights and Christmas earrings. Oh. I'll make sure to wear them next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, collection. and you know, you can still see that sportswear element in the yeah. like 27 yeah. and you know, the fabric selection. Again, so that's, awesome. a, that's quite yeah. that's quite a kind of casual image just with extraordinary fabrics yeah. going on there and extraordinary textures. But I love number 28, just this kind of zip up headed top. It looks like a running yeah. top, you know, yeah. and I love that about. Yeah. That's kind of his, his um, referencing to previous collections, yeah, I would previous assume. Yeah. Um, like 29 as well. That's that amazing. It bridging, looks like a knotted scarf. He's that's bridging just flown like all the way down. The evening the with the, some yeah. of his sportswear pieces. I like that. Yeah, that's which cool. is really nice. It's like a nice way to kind of introduce not doing a jacket over a gown. Yeah. If you want, if you're going out in the evening, you didn't want to like. Mm. You know, if you're a bit and also, I think we're all really bored of that sweatshirt. Over, I know Mark Jacobs yeah. does it really well, but a sweatshirt over a long dress just feels yeah. really done, and this feels like, mm. a, like a nice. Yeah, it's a nice new interpretation, and and as well for spring summer, it's a nice interpretation as mm. well. Um, I like this as well because I feel like it's got editorial punch. Fresh. Like yeah. I can imagine this being shot really, that's really well. That's it. That's it. But you know, it's funny because we were talking about obviously this is going to be the season where he has that presence yeah. mm. and it's like he's even figured, factored that in yeah. so like when it is on the cover of self-service which yeah. it probably will be yeah. um, it will just really look great, yeah. beautiful you know 
And actually looking at his oh palette and the way yeah, that yeah. that's flowing. Um, do you remember that Hyder Ackerman collection? Oh God, yeah, yeah, so with those midnight blues and the lime green coming in, he's definitely got, he's definitely got I'd say, quite a, an associated sense of colour to Hyder Ackerman. Definitely. I think that's kind of what I was getting at when I asked about his peers before. I do think yeah. there's kind of, I see, yeah, I see these kind of elements with, you're right, Hyder Ackerman, like, as I said, Raph, I think there's something interesting there. Mm. I mean, that coat's clearly made, is that, a le that's not leather, that's... It looks is it like leather? No, leather. I think that's leather, yeah. It's yeah that's I think extraordinary it's colours yeah. for leather. But then it looks like it's got silk on the cuff. Right. Wrapped around, but I don't know. I wouldn't he is great with leather, though. You yeah. know, he does absolutely There's a leather. lot of leather in this collection yeah. that's really, really adventurous. Really he cuts sure the edges really cleanly as well. They really look cleanly. almost untrimmed. I'm really yeah. not sure about six. I don't know. I love that, though, because yeah. that'll look great in a Yeah, no, but I just, like it's just the flopping that yeah. um, I'm mm. kind of a little bit dubious about. I, like, there was one a little bit later on. There was a red um, one. And it was a yeah. skirt, but the skirt kind of flicked on the leg, and it almost looked like, you know, like when you curl a bit of paper? Yeah. And that was a lot more cooler. It, yeah, like the, the way that it fell was nicer than the flop, yeah. I think. But, but I, I wonder know. if six and seven, sorry, Liam, just to mm. go back, I wonder if there's an element six and seven where talking about the installation, the artwork that we were looking at. Yeah. I wonder if you saw that girl in from side angle. on, whether yeah. it would look like yeah. it was all blue. You're on the money. I'm yeah. hoping that it would yeah. do it. Maybe it wouldn't, but I, I um. wonder if there's an element where when you catch her from afar, she looks like she's wearing complete <laughs> yeah. blue. Uh, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Tate also thinks. Sorry, sorry. Tom, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, but Thomas Tate always thinks about his clothes in motion as well. So there's quite a strong possibility that that effect, which looks a bit haphazard, is actually intentional. Yeah. Mm. I mean, perhaps he wants that slight awkwardness. I do think so. Oh, well, yeah, I don't think there's one bit of his collection that he hasn't considered. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's very considered. But and I um, think it is a collection to be made to see from lots of different angles I as well. I imagine eight. each I garden would look really I different. Eight. Eight. But eight and nine, like, they look like she's been blown by, with wind from yes. the front. Yeah. You know, and I yes. love that idea of bringing motion into the clothes yes. as well as just expecting them to move well. Yes. I think that's really interesting. Like, nine mm. looks like she's wearing a sporty jacket in the wind and it's all blown yes. back on her, which is that like there's... A, I think there's something really beautiful about that. It makes the clothes mm. seem really dynamic. Yes. Even that, where she's moving very quickly. Yeah, but a lot of yeah. pieces look like that. They look like she's in motion. Yes. Eleven is very expensive. Like it's very like mm. like you said that reference of Dior. Well, not reference of Dior, mm. but you know, I just feel it's um, the boning looks really really yeah. expensive. Mm. Is that a leather jacket? I think it is uh, leather, isn't it? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. It's a pretty stiff fabric. I also think? love these one-sided epaulette things. Yeah. Here, mm. Yeah. Best. I just love the idea. I think it's really hard when you're using fabrics like leather. Sometimes it is hard to get that sense of motion. And I think he's just going back to his cutting ability. Everything looks so dynamic. You know, oh, it looks so it. alive. I really love it. I can't wait to see like, what he does with his campaign. Like That's mm -hmm. going to be super sweet. Does he get a campaign as part of the bundle? Mm, I presume he I would, do. I, th I would think so. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good opportunity, just with all of the awareness that's yeah, happening in right now, it. to do it and to just do something. So no, maybe maybe so he's not ready yet. I don't know, but it would be nice to see that. Oh, 16's nice. Sixteen. Mm. That, it's like that that is giving me a skirt. little bit of J. Mm. W. Anderson. You know when he did mm. the sort yeah. of the the um, oh, what was it? What fabric was it? And it, he had like square. It looked like a sweetie wrapper. Yeah. But mm. it was like a block piece yeah. of fabric in the middle. Yeah. I can't remember what season it was, but it's. I think it was two 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 seasons two ago. Seasons, yeah. yeah, but I think what's interesting, and I, th I remember saying it at that we were actually doing that panel together, weren't we? And I remember saying mm, it at that point is that he's not really sure what to do with women's chests. Mm. Oh really? Who? And, uh, Thomas. Tom, no, J W. Anderson, Anderson, whereas yeah. he he is, yeah, he yeah. Is, and yeah. he knows how to work a yeah, yeah, yeah. feminine shape. Yeah. But apparently, I, I think I've read somewhere he did sit, sit down with buyers and he talked to them about what buyers wanted and buyers were going, look, women feel awkward about certain areas yeah. of their body. Mm. And it's very typical, Thomas Tate, that he just sort of embraced that. I think that he's and very humble sort of as a designer. Yes, he, he is, listens isn't he? a lot. He's yeah. like a total pleasure to talk to. Like, I loved interviewing him. If you see him, he's so pleasant. And I think that's yeah. really nice as well as I think he, and I think he's part of a very cool set of people in London. He has nice friends who, work in fashion and give him good advice and yeah. I think that's really nice to see as well where he feels a little bit like he's actually immersing himself in like he went to a lot of shows at the men's and stuff. I think he was just happy he just won the award you know yeah. that's nice he's got his finger on the pulse in some ways yeah are we impressed by what we've seen oh I am I think so that's an enormous body of ideas mm. huge. Yeah, that's huge it what feels I like think. a really cohesive statement I love this idea of, kind of yeah. colour and motion and 
the colour is just absolutely beautiful. Oh, I love three. It's so three seductive. Is like but it's in, oh yeah, but it's interesting so that it feels cohesive when there's such a huge variety of fabrics, yeah. colours, textures, the way he's playing with it, and yet it still feels like mm. one. His idea. placement as well, the way that he's placed it, is mm. is great. Um, I think it's just really sexy this idea that's a, of reveal and conceal that he's doing through movement and, and this idea mm. of kind of that the fabrics on one garment would move in a different way. Like number five is a really good example of that, where that flippy sort of pleat would move in a very different way to the rest of the garment, and then she's already got one shoulder out, so it's almost like there's multiple different levels of asymmetry coming through both in kind of the cut of the pieces, but also in the way it would move, which is really, really exciting. That feels very new as an idea. Then to Have we to got a closer them. image of the glasses of the eyewear? And that was all the close-ups. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. I will do that later. <laughs> <laughs> they look good. They look really good. Yeah, they good. look really good. What were you going to say? Sue? I just said to um, cut to do something like that so that it doesn't look ugly and forced together, but is actually yeah. cut, you know, really three sixty degrees around the body so that it all flows mm. beautifully like that is quite a feat actually. The eyewear does look amazing. It looks like it's kind of fading into her eye. It's amazing. Oh, so expensive. He's done well. some very radical frames. Mm. Yeah. He, does. he did the crazies. And, and yeah. Yeah. So do we, is this what we were hoping for from Thomas Tate? I don't know if I even knew what I was going to say. I don't, yeah. I don't really think about but, um, it. But yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, it's great. That's the, that's the beauty of him, I think. Mm. You, don't, you don't know. I, I, I wasn't expecting this, but mm. um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'd really like to know how easy this is going to be to sell or how easy the pieces are to wear. Mm. But um. I imagine that you can see lots of commercial potential, even like something like number yeah, 10, if you do that skirt form, yeah. with slightly less of a revealing panel cut, you can yeah. imagine I mean, that doing really well. Yeah. The jackets were beautiful. Is it giving, is it, I was really intrigued before when we were talking about that we, we don't know who the Thomas Tate woman is. Are we looking at this and is it giving us any more ideas? No. Mm. No? no? But I kind of like that, she's a bit of an enigma, isn't yeah. she? <laughs> This definitely feels like it's quite a young collection, I would say, which it hasn't necessarily been the case with previous ones. She's, she's, she's sitting, uh, his woman is sitting in the same vein as a Christopher woman for me mm. at the minute. Um, it's that sort of playful, elegant sort of, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Mm. Um, seven in the evening at the Serpentine, mm. kind of, you know, yeah, well versed art culture, amazing. sort of well, yeah, well travelled woman, but the, at the same time, is very playful with her colour and I don't know. Um, yeah, it's nice. I, I wonder if those are tights or if they are just like um, the is ones he, with the print. Oh well, uh, yes, I think um, because he doesn't. He once said he doesn't really come from a totally fashion background. Mm. Didn't he? he yeah, grew yeah. up. He didn't read no, fashion oh, yeah, he's in Canada. Yeah. So. A Canadian suburb. But you get the sense of a fresh eye, definitely. Yes. You get the sense of, you know, it's interesting that he is so engaged with the work of artists and stuff, as it does feel like he's... Yeah, he's not been too... As much as he's good at listening, as we all said, it doesn't feel yeah. like too much like he's kind of completely immersed and wrapped up in fashion, which I think there's a real kind of lightness to that, I, the inspiration, I feel. I love it. I think it's my favourite thing I've seen. 27 <laughs> I really like as well, I think it's I think cool. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's really, really quite a radical. It's really good. It's, because it's so simple and doesn't look over, you know, it doesn't look like it's trying too hard. That's just going to penetrate like so well in an editorial as mm. well. It's just really going to kind of, yeah. Do you think it's one piece? I would say I that's th I interesting with all the garments um, as I've yeah. looked at them, yeah. and it you looks almost like the styling is wrapped into the piece. You can't work out if it's put together or. I think it is. So I think that's good. just a dress. Okay. Because um, it looks like a, you know, it looks like yeah. the tiny skirt's about to fall Imagine off. Imagine if that yeah. was a mini skirt. Yeah. Imagine if that that would be the coolest mini skirt. Imagine like just pairing that with a t-shirt would yeah. be so mm. nice. Like it's pretty yeah. daring. <laughs> pretty daring. But I love, I love that in all the pieces, that you, just, you can't really work out what comes with what, and what, what's a dress and what's a top and what's a top with a dress. I think this illusion play might be part of it. I think quite a lot of things maybe are one piece because I think with yeah. that pink dress at 29, 29. Mm. when you see it under that top and you see it in that colour, you realise that it is meant to look like she's got a silk scarf knotted around her yeah. neck that's just mm. flowing down her body and it's mm. transforming into a dress. But when you see it on the other ones, you can't necessarily see that part of mm. the illusion. I love mm. how forceful he is with this... Um, with this this cut in the um, yeah. in the chest area as well, mm. he's kind of really saying to us, "Look, this is mm. my thing, my mm. thing, you know, mm. uh, and and this is how I like uh, the skin to be revealed in my evening looks, you know. Mm. It, it, it's it's nice. Mm. It's Which going confident. back to the Heide Ackerman 
comparison is a, is a similar thing we see there where it's very much kind of revealed lots of kind of slitting and draping mm. which and is clavicle really and sternum yeah. fetishisation <laughs> yeah real sternum reveal but that feels modern doesn't it you know that kind of that sense of not showing cleavage but showing kind of sternum it's a, I like that <laughs> I think it's cool <laughs> um, yeah but you don't no, want something cool. where it's like boobs out or it's something that's a bit more kind of like boy you know do mm. you know what I mean like a loose shirt looks cool. not so like overtly sexy just yeah. a lot more yeah I like it so we're impressed. Mm, very. And where do we want to see this go now? Do we want more stockists? Do we want more editorial? Do we want a campaign? Where is he cur currently stocked? I mean, he's, he's, stocked. Ma he's in matches. 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 And then you can get his stuff on... Oh, I don't even know where else. I, I think UK has got matches. Not Dave Street, not Net, I don't believe. What about believe. Farfetch? No, I don't think he... No. Well, Farfetch, they'll pick him up in other boutiques. Hmm? And they'll, Farfetch, they'll pick him up in from other boutiques. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. I think having more stockists would be the, it's the big thing the big really because I don't think there's any point in him doing a campaign if he's only got 10 stockists because yeah. Really. Yeah. it's going to just frustrate people who can't buy it and then you know, you'd be concerned that, that would alienate people the next season mm. I think you need some buyers who are prepared to really take a leap of faith mm -hmm. and imagine that they're Do we have any sort them. of um, knowledge on who kind of attended was it quite a big I presume scene? everyone will have gone yeah. Yeah. So the prize. yeah yeah, yeah. And it was an enormous venue, absolutely huge. So I think he will be fine. I think that in terms of everyone picking him up, I think everyone's kind of going in with the with the uh, mental state of we're going to be buying, we're going to be placing yeah. an order, and they just need to kind of see it to confirm and mm. experience it. And, and you know, I think that the the show is definitely going to help them kind of make their minds up. And then the and then I guess the um, appointments as well mm. will um, do that. Cool. We love it. We're mm. happy. We just want more people to buy it so we can buy it. Yeah, Perfect. definitely. Should we give them a round of applause to wrap things up? Well done. <laughs>